Okay. Here's what I carry in my saddlebag. So I've learned to carry these things over the decades. All right, when you go riding, what's gonna happen? What are, what's gonna happen? All right, you're gonna get thirsty. Carry water, fresh water. Good rain. Carry a rain suit and don't carry your rain suit. I don't carry my rain suit in plastic bags. I carry them in an old sock I had from my motocross uh, socks, boots, uh, socks for the boots. Came up and folded over the edge of the boots. These are really big. But I have my rain pants, rain jacket, and my rain gloves. Rain gloves are different from regular gloves. I don't think they, in my experience, they don't really keep your hands dry. I think they just keep your hands warm. And they don't, uh, like leather gloves, get really soupy and mushy uh, in the rain. So uh, rain gloves don't dye your hands either. But I have all that in there. And that can breathe. You know, if you carry it in a plastic bag after it's got wet, you know, and you go to take it out next time, it's going to be stinky and moldy. And you, I don't know if you can throw a, uh, a rain suit into a washing machine. I guess you can, but uh, I don't know if that's going to clean mold. Uh, but anyway, I carry, that's why I carry mine in a sock. All right, what else is going to happen while you're riding a motorcycle? There are two kinds of motorcycles, motorcyclists when it comes to having flat tires. There are those that have had flat tires and those who will. Here's my plug kit. I carry it in this little pouch. Okay, it didn't come with that. I, I found them. Uh, I have my tire pump. Uh, it will pump up a motorcycle tire, the rear tire on my Venture. It will pump it up to 40 pounds in about five minutes, and it has a gauge on there. Uh, I carry one of these in every vehicle I own. And uh, you see I have a little cord that I made up with a uh, identifying 12-volt wire. That has this receptacle in there because this has a plug that plugs into the old cigarette lighter receptacles. All right. This is from a Witter electric vest that aren't polarity sensitive. So I had to make sure I was making it so that like the center on this is, is hot. And I had to just line everything up polarity wise. Anyway, so if you make up a plug to take your pump plug, or if you want to put the plug in for charging your cell phone or your helmet camera or whatever, you do it that way. Um, I picked this up at, uh, I think it was about eight or 10 bucks at an auto parts store. And uh, that's it. And inside there I have my I buy these packets of glue on eBay. Okay, there's a bigger one. All right. Um, rubber cement. Uh, I think they call these tire bicycle patch glue or vulcanizing glue on eBay. They're like 50 cents a piece. I date them. These ones here are from 2018. Uh, yeah, that's 2018. Um, here's the reason I buy small packets instead of big ones. There's a metal membrane under the cap. There's with the, you know, the caps have the little plug on the top for puncturing. All right, once you puncture that, I don't care how tight you make that cap, that little toothpaste tubes type thing, that's gonna be, it's gonna evaporate out of there and then it's gonna be gone. So they're a one-time thing. They're like 50 cents a piece on eBay. I buy them a dozen at a time. You have to wait a month for them, but uh, I usually carry uh, a couple at least. I also have my plugging tool. There's my reamer. And in there is my fork for installing the plugs. You can see it's a veteran. And uh, if you have tubes in your tires, you're going to want to carry patches. And you're going to want to carry a uh, piece of very fine sandpaper to rough the uh, tube up. And you're going to want to carry a couple of uh, tire spoons, tire iron spoons. You can get some 8-inch ones. Uh, they'll do the job. Okay, so what else is going to happen? You're going to get bugs on your face shield, your windshield, uh, on your bike. 
I use this. I haven't washed a motorcycle with soap and water for decades. I'm not kidding. If you read the white part of this, right above my thumb there, this is Honda Spray Detailer. Cleans road grime, grease, and bugs without water. It's safe for plastic, chrome, paint, and aluminum. Aluminum's the big one. So when you use this stuff, your see my windshield's dusty and it's got bugs on it right now. You spray the whole windshield, let it soak for a while. Only use cotton or microfiber to clean your windshield. Do one wipe, flip the rag. Do another wipe, flip the rag. Once you've done one wipe with each side of the rag, then you can polish it because when you do a wipe, you pick up all that grime and grit and you don't want to grind that into your windshield. Uh, you can do the whole bike with this stuff. This is the biggest number one selling item. They sell more of these than any other item in Honda's complete inventory. So that's what I have been using for decades. There's a lot of copy cats out there that copied Honda spray detailer. I learned about this, I don't know, 30 years ago when I was a Honda uh, motorcycle salesman. We had to get all the little kids fingerprints off the gas tanks. I don't know why people go for the gas tanks with their hands, but I had to wipe them off when I would come into work every day. So I use my old socks to clean the windshields and polish the bike. All right, so we've covered those things. Now let's cover the tools. You have to upgrade your toolkit. Upgrade those cheap pliers that come with them. These are, I got these, these were in my one Moto Guzzi. They have nice pliers that you can pull wire straight and twist it. I carry a pair of scissors. You'd be surprised how often these come in handy. I carry a lighter for many reasons I'll go into in a minute. And I upgrade some of the some of the wrenches, like this is an old BMW tool, 10 and 12 millimeter. Uh, this bike doesn't have many Phillips heads on it, so I'm not really going to upgrade the screwdriver. Plus, I have screwdriver heads on here. There's mostly Allen's. You want to make sure you have all the Allen wrenches. These came in the tool kit. You want to have some zip ties along with the wire. Uh, I usually carry at least 10 of them. The lighter. You uh, pull into a rest area somewhere, you know, it's, it's you know, if you know it's coming up, you, you want to take a break. Uh, you know, a lot of times my buddies and I, we would uh, take tinfoil wrapped potatoes, shiny side in, and uh, start a fire, throw the potatoes in there once the fire's going, cook some hot dogs, you know, maybe a can of ravioli or, or a can of beans, and you, you need a lighter to light the fire. If you break down, somebody breaks down, you got to go for help. It's getting cold, it's dark, you know, you may not find them <laughs> or they're going to get cold if it's raining or something like that. You, you want to have a fire to keep them warm. They may be injured and going into shock, you want to keep them warm. So you want to have a, a, the ability to have a fire. Carry a lighter, matches get wet. Okay, you want to carry one of these. This is a uh, cheap replica of a Leatherman. I have a Leatherman. They're pretty much the same. But, you know, they have a saw. They have a file. They have different screwdriver heads, a uh, can opener, and a bottle opener, wire cutters. Uh, you know, they're sort of semi-almost needle nose. Uh, they're pretty handy, you know, for 10 bucks. Nice addition to the toolkit. All right. You may have a problem at night. So you're gonna to need to carry flashlights. This was a headband flashlight. I like these because I can hold this with my teeth to aim right at what I'm doing, like if I'm plugging a tire. All right. Yeah, take the battery and coat, uh, turn it around or uh, put a piece of plastic so it doesn't make the uh, connection because these have a habit of turning on and killing the battery. So uh, just put a little piece of plastic on, you know, plastic bag plastic on one end of the battery and that'll prevent that from happening. 
I like these. They give these away at uh, Harbor Freight or else they're 99 cents a lot of times. This is a floodlight. It has a directional three LEDs on one end, but it has the floodlight there, and that lights up a big area about as big as this table. And it's got a magnet on it, so you can put it somewhere, and it'll, you know, if you're working right there on something in the dark, or it's got a hook on it, you can hang it somewhere, and uh, it will become uh, a stationary light that way. Then I have the, uh, the mag light. So, when you get done doing all that stuff, there's two things you can use to clean up. I use, uh, I always carry hand sanitizer. I always carry, I used to carry toilet paper. This is how I used to carry it. All right, the problem with toilet paper is it gets wet. It gets dirty. It's raining and you, emergency, uh, you know, call of nature, you run in the woods. With this, you know, it's raining, you know, it gets wet, you end up throwing the whole roll away. Don't use toilet paper again. Go into Walmart or go into a dollar store and buy baby wipes. These things are practically saturated. There's a hundred of them in this one. This is my new one for this year. And they're moist. You go to a rest area, or it's a hot, stinking, miserable day, and you pull over, and you're all sweaty. Your neck is sweaty. Your forehead behind your ears, and you're just yuck. Okay, you can take a bath with these things. They are so refreshing, and they are so moist that you can take a bath with them. This one has 64 wipes in it. All right, and you can buy them at the dollar store. I was buying them at the dollar store. I think I bought. I don't know about that one. I was buying them in a dollar store. They're safe for babies. So they're safe for you. You'll be safe. And they're not mushy paper. Like toilet paper is designed to dissolve so it doesn't plug your plumbing up. These are not. This is tough paper. It, these are tougher than paper towels. And this is a dried out one, but that's how big they are. And uh, not to be gross, but if you're in the woods uh, and it's your bathroom, you can uh, do one wipe and then fold it and then do another wipe and fold it and then fold it and then fold it. All right, and dig a hole with your heel and bury it. They're great. You will not go back to toilet paper. You go into a porta john you can clean the seat off with this. It's antibacterial, uh, disinfectant. And uh, you go into a biker bar, you got to use the bathroom, you know, you clean the toilet seat off. Uh, these are great. You, you, will, you will not go back to toilet paper. All right, when you pull into that rest area and you're cooking with your lighter, the fire you lit with your lighter, you're going to want something to eat with. I like to have disposable stuff. All right. I like the corded earplugs for two reasons. When you pull them out of your ears, you can put the cord around your neck and you won't lose them. And... If you want to use them as without the cord, you can get them out of your ears because they have the cord on them. I rip the, break the cord off with about a half an inch sticking out, then you can get them out of your ear. The ones without that cord, you can't get them out of your ear. You got to use your key to dig your uh, earplug out sometimes. All right, I like to use paper maps. I want to see where I'm going. I want to see not where I'm going but so much as where I am. What's around? What's the closest city? Are there alternative routes? You know, there's a storm. The road was washed out. Where, where do I go from here? That's why I, that's why I like paper maps. I'm old-fashioned, okay? When you have paper maps, especially at night, you're going to need a compass. I, I do. I've, always, I've gotten used to using compasses, all right? There's an expensive compass, all right? put it down okay it's saying that way is north here's a 99 cent compass I got on eBay look what it's saying same thing they're both pointing north so the $25 one and the dollar one tell you the same thing it's nice to know when you're looking at a map which direction everything was which way is up carry your owner's manual 
I hope you've read this thing several times to learn things like where's your fuses or where the fuses are located. I carry my owner's card, my insurance card, everything in this little plastic bag and with the owner's manual protected from the uh, rain and talking about insurance card a lot of people don't know this but you can up your what is it called your minimum liability insurance uh, I think the minimum here in Pennsylvania is like five thousand dollars or maybe it's ten thousand dollars have you been to an emergency room lately uh, if you stay overnight you know it's over a thousand dollars you know that's nothing so for 20 bucks or 30 bucks you can up your liability coverage to three hundred thousand dollars that's my minimum on all my vehicles and i stack them so that they can share with each other in case i exhaust one for 20 or 30 dollars i up my uh liability coverage to three hundred thousand dollars so ask your insurance man you know how much to up it i have i'm not pushing it i'm not getting paid anything but i just switched from sentry which i was with for decades to progressive and you have to kind of get they don't volunteer this information sometimes you just have to squeeze it out of the uh out of the insurance man uh that they have included roadside assistance and they include something else i forget oh um trip disruption for the same price and that's the one i have now on both of my uh both of my bikes but uh you want to get that you can write the bike off but you can't write off liability so you want to increase your liability and it's just a few bucks more okay when you pull in somewhere and it's mushy you want to have something to put under your kickstand so you don't sink in. This big one is for my venture. This little one here, I, uh, it's a cut up mud flap or something. Uh, that's for my Kawasaki. Doesn't need a lot of uh, a bigger footprint as the Yamaha does. Okay, uh, when you're riding along and you start, you know, you've been in the saddle for 10 hours, you know, uh, you start to get achy. Carry some ibuprofen if you can take it. Your eyes have been getting bombarded by dry dirt dust all day. You want to carry eye drops. You just want lubricating drops. Don't buy the ones that claim they get the red out because they get the red out by restricting your um, blood vessels in your eyes. So uh, you want to get ones that just lubricate. So I carry eye drops, ibuprofen. And they carry chapstick. Your lips get dry, even in the summer. Okay, I have, uh, where the heck is it? Oh, here it is. I carry this little first aid kit, you know, antiseptic, some band-aids, some uh, wipes, stuff like that. It, you should carry a little, uh, just throw it in there. You pick these up for five or ten bucks. You might be glad you did. Uh, this is for uh, just for emergencies. Like when you get to where you're going, you know, you're going to want to take your boots off and put a hat on to shield yourself from that angry red ball in the sky. See how this one's very vented. Something you can soak with water and put on and get out of the sun. I carry a meter, multimeter. You know, if your bike don't start or somebody there's bike doesn't start, you know, you want to go first thing. Of course, you want to check to see if you got enough voltage in the battery. The battery may have gone bad. Uh, you know, and if you're blowing fuses, you know, you can test the fuse with this. You know, at Harbor Freight, they, they used to give these to you if you just showed up. Uh, I, I can't imagine they're more than 10 bucks now, but uh, I compared the <laughs> values to the third decimal point with my Fluke. I'm a, I'm a retired electrician. Uh, and this gave the same values on like uh, receptacle voltage and uh, uh, battery voltage and everything to the third decimal point. So uh, 
not bad for uh, under 10 bucks. So uh, if somebody's battery's dead, I carry a pair of uh, jumper cables that I made up. These are, this is my kit I carry on my Venture. This is the kit I carry on my little bike. And of course a cargo net for attaching things. I have a little two-man tent, which means it's a one-man tent. It uh, folds up to the size of a loaf of bread and uh, maybe a little longer. And, uh, you know, you need to have something with, to attach things to your rack. Uh, so these cargo nets are pretty good. I take a little tent with me when I go to a place like if I go to mid-Ohio for the day. Uh, first thing I do is claim a spot by putting up a tent. I put my little foot pad down so my bike don't sink into the dirt. I'll find a place that's going to be in the shade later. Set my tent up. And I throw all my gear in there rather than leave it draped on the bike. And it's out of sight, out of mind. Uh, so uh, it's nice to be able to have a little two-man tent if you go like for uh, the whole day or maybe even the weekend. If it rains, you know, you might want to uh, go in there and take a nap. Uh, it's tiring, you know, going maybe you know, riding for six hours to get somewhere. Uh, it's uh, amazing how a little, uh, you know, half-hour nap does uh, recharge your battery. And a tent, little two-man tent, does the trick for me. All right, I think I've covered just about everything except for this. Did I cover this? I don't know. I'll cover it again. It's a little sprayer. Let me pull the bottom on. It's a personal sprayer. That's the pump handle. And you, one-handed, you pump it up. You crank it about ten times. And the water... You fill it to this fill line right there and I hope you see the mist coming out see the mist coming out okay this will last about a half an hour of me using that at every red light or stop sign or even just cruising along you know I'll keep it in my little pouch here you know and uh, I pull up to a stop sign I'll just pull it out pull the trigger and uh, I'll spray it under, right around my Adam's apple, under my helmet, around the back of my neck. I'll have my jacket unzipped. I always wear a jacket. And I'll saturate my shirt. And when I start rolling again, that evaporates and takes the heat with it. So uh, I have this one. And for when I get to where I'm going, I went to mid-Ohio one year. It was almost 100 degrees. I saw Nikki Hayden there. Uh, in his race. But uh, this is a 16 ounce of what I just showed you, that little spray pump bottle. It's a mist, personal mister. This one here, uh, I think if you turn the mist, there's the valve, and there's the brass jet on the end. Uh, and that's about a 30 inch hose and a shoulder strap you walk around. Uh, you clip it on with the clip. It comes with a clip. I have it clipped on right there. Uh, this will spray for two hours, I think, before it's empty. That's how fine the mist coming out is. And it is refreshing on those miserable, stinking hot days. But uh, this is about 25 bucks on eBay, made by Misty Mate. It's called a Cool Blast. It's worth it. We don't have air conditioning on these things. Not yet. I heard Suzuki's working on air conditioning, but uh, we don't have it yet. All right, I hope I covered, didn't cover this. I don't think. These straps here, let me, let me demonstrate how these work. You put them around your handlebars, not here, of course, in there, but you put them on your handlebars. All right, now you have a place to hook a tie-down strap. You know, and it's it's less likely to slip. You, you want to put it on the other side of your handlebar controls there. But uh, with some sport bikes, there's really not a lot of room. And, and some bikes you can't even get. Like Goldwings, I think they have cast handlebars. And I know my first generation Venture, it didn't have tubular bars. It had castings. And you couldn't put a hook on there without really scratching the hell out of the casting. So you needed to carry these. And these are tied on strap extensions you got to have them 
especially if you have cast handlebars because if you have to transport your bike for some reason you know go rent a trailer if it breaks down or somebody comes to rescue you with a trailer i'm sure a lot of people know this but i'm going to tell you anyway for those two people that don't know this whenever you use tie downs you have to completely compress the front end pull the slack out pull on the bars compress on both sides and have the bike vertical it has to be straight up and down if you compress the forks and you have these out at a nice spread out angle your tie downs you can put that on any vehicle you can put it on a spaceship going into the up to the moon and it will not move if you have those tie downs tight pulled and you have them spread out it'll be safe to go so uh I carry these on my big bike just in case I have to call for the wagon come and rescue me which which only happened one time uh, I guess about 30 years ago but anyway um, I think I covered enough those are the essentials you should carry in your in your saddlebag I see people that go out for a ride they don't have a toolkit they don't have water they, they don't, you know, I've seen people riding motorcycles with flip-flops on, a t-shirt and shorts. They don't have anything. They don't even have a place to carry things. I don't get that. So, that's how I do it. I guess I'll see you out there.